read that last part, but I did it for a reason because we have been uh, reading this scripture for those of us who actually read the Bible. We have been reading the scripture for years and, and we're here with God is what the Lord is saying because He's He's actually talking to the disciples. They want to know, Lord, when is it? You know, when's the day going to come? You know, give us some signs, whatever. And so, Jesus is giving them parables to teach them yes. when the signs or the times is. He's telling them what the heaven is like. But I want to go. I want to exegete some words out of here and take some things out of here that's going to be a little different than what we've been taught. And so that's how God is dealing with me as far as uh, his word, because the word of God should be new revelation every day. When you read it, it should be new revelation, new understanding, you know. And so, and so he speaks to me differently now these days, and I'm, I'm happy about it. Some people don't like it, but that's okay. So I know you're probably saying, now what does sisterhood and unity got to do with the ten virgins? Because five of them had oil and the other five didn't. Well, before I go there, I want to take you to one of my favorite, and, and I don't want my children to say nothing when I say this. My favorite movie, Shaka Zulu. Shaka. Shaka. Last 30 days, I've been watching Shaka. Probably about four times, I think. I think I've seen it about four times. And, and Shaka, if you haven't seen it, it's about 25 years old. But if you haven't seen it, go get it and see it. If you saw it back then, watch it again. If you saw it and you missed some things, get it, because there's revelation in Shaka Zulu, I guarantee you. But there's one particular scene that, and plus Shaka was fine, but anyway, there was one particular scene, I'm staying focused, thank you Lord, keep praying, keep praying for me sister, sister do. But uh, one thing that I like about the movie, was well, many things, but one part that I really loved about the movie was the wedding ceremony. And what, what the Amazulus do is they, they have this uh, certain way that they do their, their wedding ceremonies. Actually, a lot of the African tribes do, because I study African tribes. Because I'm a queen, so I need to study where I come from. And so um, when, I, when I watch the movie, what happens is all of the sisters in the village, they come together and they prepare one lady for a uh, wedding. A lot of the women, the little girls grow up and, and the first thing they think in their mind is that I want to marry the king. So I don't know how they choose who gets to be the, the next queen because the king can have a queen once a year. And so he has a whole load, truckload of queens on the side here. But what happens is the ladies in the village, they come together and they prepare the lady for marriage. They do her hair. They make sure she's clean. They make sure she stays pure, that she's a virgin, that she ain't out laying around with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. They watch over her. And what they do is they dress her in these nice fine beads and they make a veil for her face so she can you know, be hidden until she gets before the, the king. And she comes up and she dances before the king and they dance and they come on up to each other. Y'all, you know, forgive me, I ain't eight in seven days. I'm kind of out of it, but y'all know what I'm saying. She danced before the king. <sighs> Amen. <clears throat> and so, and then the king, they lay them down on the ground and they cover them up. And I believe the king is checking to make sure she's a virgin. That's what I'm believing. And then when he gets up, he's all happy. I'm telling y'all something in the movie. Go get it. It's a good movie. <laughs> and he gets up, he's dancing. And what happens is he uh, accepts her as the next queen. And then she goes from the village sisters over to the queen sisters. Oh my God, one love to my sister, Linda, my Facebook friend. I'm so glad you're here. And, and then she goes over and she joins the other queens. Now, she has a whole new sister group. They all take care of each other. They all cook for each other. They cook for the king. They, they all uh, dress each other. They do each other's hair. They, when one gets pregnant, they all become the, nur the nurse to that woman. They do prenatal care for her. And then when she get ready to have her baby, they all come together and they help her birth her baby. They do sisterhood stuff. What happened to us? Come on. What happened to us? I believe that we come over here in, in America and picked up some old ugly ways of not being staying together as sisters. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. I believe. 
That's why I study the tribes because I like the way they come together and be sisters. When they call each other, when they, you know, and they might have some animosity. I don't know, but you don't never see it. You don't see it. I'm sure because we're women. I'm sure there's some kind of jealousy going on, some animosity going on, but you don't see it because let somebody come up in the tribe, come up in the village and want to hurt them. All of them get together, baby. Ain't even a be no, uh, you can kill her because I don't even like her. There was one queen that she didn't like some people in the village, and but she was the king's sister. She wasn't married to the king. She was the king's sister. So what I'm trying to say is, is that if we can just look at some of the other ways of, of doing things as far as sisters go, if we just get outside of Arizona, get outside of America, go and find your roots and find out how they live because we have lost it. We have forgotten who we are. We have forgotten where we come from. We have literally lost our mind. And now that I am becoming conscious, and I thank my bishop for that because Sitting under him, I'm learning to be conscious. And things are looking much different to me now. Things are looking different. Nothing's looking the same anymore. And I thank God for that. So what, what's troubling me about Matthew chapter 25, and I'm troubled a little bit. I'm going to tell you why. Because these, five, these ten women left home to go to meet the bridegroom. Now, I thought that the ten were going to meet the bridegroom just like the king, they was going to marry the king. But when I did some study on the Jewish tradition and how they did things back in the day, I found out that really the ten, the bridegroom, the bridesmaids, they show up to go to the wedding festival. But they can't get in unless they go in with the bridegroom. That's what's going on. So they show up um, to make sure they can get inside of this wedding party. I'm getting somewhere. I'm just that they lay in the foundation. They lay in the foundation. And so what happens is they, they get up and they get their lamps ready. And it's not really a lamp. It's like a stick with, I don't know, a cloth on the end. And you light it. And you have to have oil to keep it lit. No oil, no light. And so these ten get up. Now they, they had to have known that the other five didn't have enough oil. That's, that's what I'm thinking. How do you leave home with your sisters knowing that you need to be prepared? How, how would five of you prepare yourself and not prepare the other five? Okay, how do we come in and become ministers and elders and teachers and, and pastors of churches, women? We come in, but then when somebody come in off the street, we forget that we used to do drugs. We forget that we used to drink. We forget that we used to be out there in the street. We forget that we used to hold around, excuse me. We forget. But when they come in, when they come in, we forget who we were. And we hold our nose up at them. You don't want to give them any of your oil. And God says you need to share your oil. You need to share your oil. I, I, this scripture troubles me. It troubles me. They all come together and they fall asleep because the bridegroom taking his sweet time, he comes when he gets ready. Yeah. Yeah. So he decides to come at midnight and the trumpet is sound and all the bridesmaids gets up and they grab their they little lights and five of them, the lights went out. So they come to the five sisters who had oil, said, oh, can I get some? Can I get a little bit? The five who had oil said, no, nah, sis. <laughs> you can't have none of my oil. But you know what? You can go down to Circle K. You can go down to Fry's Food and purchase you some oil. And come on back so you can get in with us. That's what they told them. Now the problem I'm having with this part of the scripture, Sister Deesa, help me, is that did you not know you were sending off your sisters? You know good and well when they left, they was not getting in. You knew when they left, they was not getting in. You knew when they walked out this church building, they may not come back. You let them walk out of here with no oil in their vessel. No oil. Okay, we ain't talking about oil. oil. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about prayer. We're talking about fasting with them. We're talking about helping them. When they call and say, I can't pay my rent. We're talking about you let them walk out of here. Yes. You let them walk out of here with no oil. And you knew they didn't have any. You knew. You knew. And so this scripture, they 
they trouble me. I, 